Hello, my name's Richard Thripp, and I'm running for Congress as a progressive Democrat in Florida's 6th District. I wanted to talk a little bit about myself and my candidacy. I've been a lifelong resident of Volusia County, Florida. I grew up in the Daytona Beach area. Now I live on the west side of the county. I'm uh, 28 years old and a husband, a father to a one-year-old baby boy. He's very cute. And uh, I'm also an uh, instructor of future teachers at University of Central Florida which is all online, fortunately. I just finished my PhD in education last semester where I studied um, what future teachers know about personal finance and investing. Very interesting, and what we found was they don't know as much as you'd guess, and there's been a big pay cut to teachers in Florida as of 2011 and also other public employees because the pension plan got scaled back quite a bit. Uh, as I run for Congress, the most important thing to me is to fight for hard-working Americans and uh, everyone who has been held back in this economy. It's something that's gotten a lot worse recently. We're seeing more and more crazy things like in the CARES Act for coronavirus. There's actually a tremendous giveaway to real estate moguls so they can um, not have to pay income tax and there's all kinds of stuff coming out like for example wells fargo was prioritizing big businesses over small businesses when it came to receiving those paycheck protection program loans and this is just a pattern we keep seeing again and again and so as a person who has parents who are very pro-trump i used to be a republican too and bought into a whole line of bs about how you know, he was going to do stuff to help the hard-working American pe people. He said he's going to make sure, you know, people aren't forgotten. And, of course, it was my fault to, to believe that because anybody with a balanced perspective would have seen that he was a total fraud. And, you know, even our congressman here, Michael Waltz, he said that in 2016. He ran at ads against Donald Trump because he said he was a threat to our country. But then he comes to um, run for Congress in 2018 and says how great he is, and he's basically his greatest fanboy now. Basically, he, he just puts out any propaganda he can to go along with what Fox News is saying, which is mostly made up, and, and with what Donald Trump is saying, which is also made up. And so it, it was bad before, but then when it came to the coronavirus pandemic, it's cost us tens of thousands of American lives. It's cost us tens of millions of jobs, 26 million so far, and, and the total cost to our national debt is in the trillions, many trillions, and if you add on economic activity, it's going to be well over 10 trillion, most likely. We don't know when this is going to end. It's, it's probably going to go on all through this year and possibly even into next. So I think we have left behind so many Americans because in politics now, and as it has been for a while, but it's gotten worse and worse, the politicians, many of them are all bought and paid for. When they get a big contribution from, say, Big Sugar or NASCAR or oil companies, they you know, are beholden to them. It's not a gift. It's an investment that produces a tremendous return. And so that's how I came to see that we need more progressive policies in America. And for me, being someone who used to think the climate crisis wasn't real because I was, you know, always being indoctrinated by family and the media I was listening to to believe that, oh, it's the sun that's burning hotter. Actually, the sun's burning colder right now, and it will until 2053. Um, and so finding out, for example, that we have more carbon dioxide now, 415 parts per million increase from 280 just you know, probably in 1950, made me think there's there's no way that could be without, you know, human action. Because you look through history, and uh, based on records, we know it was higher many millions of years ago, but it never increased this quickly over just, you know, 50 years. So we have to do something about that, and we're doing exactly the opposite of something productive. It's just getting worse each year. We've had a little reprieve now, but we need a Green New Deal which people think, oh, that's just crazy, but you look at it and it just it makes perfect sense. You've got to start investing in, in renewable energy. You've got to stop subsidizing and allowing oil companies to write off things and take very low interest loans that aren't even profitable. Like Cracking doesn't make any sense. It's only profitable with heavy debt at low interest rates and by off, uh, putting off 
the, the cost of environmental destruction, fresh water destruction, and um, emissions flaring off of natural gas and you know seismic activity hurting the surrounding people who live near fracking, those costs are, are not being charged to fracking companies. If they were, it would be even less financially sensible because it just doesn't make any sense. I've come out to support um, universal health care for all. Two months ago I did and I've been running since the beginning of the year. Uh, I think that at the same time that I will fight for whatever I can get for us, if it's just to expand Medicaid to every state or if it's just to you know have a public option, that is a great step. But what we aim for is universal health care for everyone. It is possible. All these costs are happening now but they're just you know being billed in a really crazy way with a lot of different bureaucracies and corporations and there's a lot of overhead these corporations like Humana, United Healthcare, Aetna, etc probably spend a third on overhead executive salaries you know giving their shareholders buybacks and dividends it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense and everyone who's had even the best health insurance knows that you keep getting bills no matter what even stuff that's got to be covered isn't, and you have to argue on the phone because they always leave the patient to sort it out. I remember my grandmother had the best health insurance you could have because her, her uh, husband who passed away worked for, for General Motors. She had UAW, United Auto Workers, Blue Cross Blue Shield, with a $400 out-of-pocket maximum per year. Nobody has a policy like that now. And despite that, she was always on the phone when I was a kid calling to complain because she get bills that she shouldn't have got. If we had a system that was universal, we could have the federal government setting the rates like they already do when it comes to Medicare and Medicaid. And if you were to centralize the taxation and the distributions, it would literally cut down on a huge amount of cost. And a lot of people say, well, the government wouldn't be able to do that. But, you know, they do. A, we've done a lot of incredible stuff with government. We put a man on the moon six times with government. And uh, when you look at private companies, they always argue for mergers and acquisitions and consolidation and centralization to cut costs and increase value to shareholders. Well, you want the biggest union um, in, in the country is the United States government. And if you, if you did that, like Bernie has proposed, Bernie Sanders has his plan, a lot of people say, oh, there's no plan. There is a plan. It's very bold, it's audacious, it's aspirational. But that's what I'm going to fight for in Congress, and I'm proud to have been endorsed by Volusia for Bernie just uh, yesterday. Then when it comes to um, taxation, one of the issues we have is the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 was really a huge robbery of the American people. And so when you saw the economy grow uh, more un under Trump, like continuing the growth that began under President Obama, it was, it was really pushed by unsustainable practices of giving huge amounts of tax breaks, giveaways, subsidies, privilege um, to big corporations. And so you had debt of, of a trillion dollars being piled on to our national debt, even during good economic times, which is unprecedented and insane. And you had very low interest rates. As you know, President Trump kept pressuring the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates down, even when it isn't sensible to have them as low as they were. And of course now we're in a crisis and we need that. And so now we're having much more deficit spending. What you needed to do for a long time was to collect more tax money from heavy earners, big corporations that have gotten a very favorable and unfair to the American people a sort of deal over the past few decades. And they didn't just get it by chance, they lobbied, they pushed hard for this. It's not like, oh, we don't know how it happened. We, we know how it happened. And so that's why you see now that you've got the richest three people have like more money than the lowest hundred million people in America. And it's insane. Um, and, and where are they now? Like Mike Bloomberg, for example, spent a billion dollars on his campaign, but now we're not hearing a whole lot from him. And he has a net worth that's above $50 billion. You would think someone who's 80 years old would give back more than he has. And the same for many, many other people. But you can't just rely on, on, on rich billionaires who, who got there by, you know, they did entrepreneurial things, they founded companies, they worked them, themselves to the bone. But at the same time, you benefit in the United States from our capital markets, 
you benefit from the opportunity here, the hardworking American people, the liberty, you know, the freedom, uh, obviously the very favorable laws in Delaware, which is where every big corporation has to go for their core of, of chicanery or chancery. I like to call it the core of chicanery though. So when you have all these advantages, it's only patriotic and American to say that, you know, a part of that needs to go back to the American people. Uh, so that's why I've also supported a universal basic income, and I'll fight for that in Congress. It's what Andrew Yang was saying, and he did all the work on polling to find that the best term for public opinion for that is the freedom dividend. What the freedom dividend would do is it would open up our country and it would really benefit Republican states a lot more than Democratic leaning states because you look at the cost of living and where is the cost of living lower it's not you know in New York or California it's in the Midwest you know it's in places that don't have those very big job opportunities so what it would be it would be to pay each um, American a thousand dollars a month and uh, that's a huge amount of money, I know. Everybody knows that's about two and a half trillion a year. But you would get a lot of it back as tax money, and it would really set us apart and let us bring people out of poverty. There's an assumption that people need jobs, but you're seeing that actually not everyone really can have a job in a traditional sense. Like it could cost more to create a job for someone than it could cost to just give them a thousand dollars a month. and uh, a lot of things are getting automated. Like 150 years ago, about half of America was agricultural workers, and now it's only 2%. It's about 10%, perhaps, if you count you know, truckers and, and grocery stores and all the ancillary industry. But if you just look at regular agriculture, that's being done on a massive scale by very few people. And we're seeing that, too, with a lot of industry. Like, for example, when you look at um, grocery stores. In Florida, our minimum wage is only $8.53 an hour. I would support having a federal minimum wage of $15 an hour, but I know that that was going to eliminate some of these jobs because a lot of them are going to get replaced with self-checkout. You see, if you go to McDonald's now, they have a kiosk where you place an order there and it cuts down on the number of employees that they need. So I think a lot of companies aren't doing a good job for their employees and they really could e do it quite easily. If you look at Walmart, for example, a lot of their employees are on Medicaid. A lot of them are getting food stamps, a WIC, um, and they're also, you know, prohibited sometimes from getting 32 hours a week to be considered full-time because the management will schedule them less so they're below full-time and they don't have to be provided with health insurance. Well, that cost should be charged back to Walmart. When someone's getting Medicaid and working at Walmart, Walmart should really be paying for that because they're getting subsidized by the taxpayer in addition to all of the advantages that they already have. We have a new Amazon warehouse distribution facility coming to Deltona. Deltona doesn't have a whole lot of commercial businesses. It's mostly houses and everyone, you know, is very excited about them coming and adding to the tax base. But at the same time, they came and they're getting two and a half million dollars of tax breaks, taking that away from small businesses. Small businesses do not get this sort of tax break when they come and set up shop. And so a lot of times people think that, oh, Republicans are better for small businesses, but really they prioritize large businesses that are more of a threat to small businesses than government is. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And so when you see something like that, and on top of that, companies do all these share buybacks and they do all of these um, dividends and paying executives so much more, much more than they used to be paid. Like they've been, they're up probably a thousand percent in the past 50 years and it's just insane. Then you think, well, why can't they do more for people? And if they did it, it would help everybody. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have huge turnover at, say, a grocery store when if you paid people better, you'd keep them more long term and not have to keep paying to hire people and, and train them. So I think we have to use government as a tool to make businesses do what they should be doing and what really benefits all Americans and our country as a whole. So when it comes to Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, uh, you have 